think you can't underestimate how difficult and how hard Colombia worked to get back into the game. They were very impressive in the first half after going down. But, and Japan just eventually ground them down and had control of the game in the second half. And that goal uh, came from Osako. He's one of those we had a look at before. And it was, it was a prolonged period of pressure, wasn't it, from the Japanese when they got that crucial goal that gave them the win in the end? It was. And, you know, Osako, I thought, was fantastic for Japan. He caused problems for Sanchez. It's another set piece in the tournament. Poor defending from Arias, the, the right back of Colombia. Just come off the line there, Osako. I'm not so sure about the position of Ospina. You know, he seemed to be in no man's land for me. And all he did, Osako, was just come off the six-yard box, just guide it into the bottom left-hand corner. You see a spinner there, nowhere, he's in no man's land, and it was a brilliant header. There's, there's, there's nobody being aggressive there to head the ball, is there? Arias, he's, he's just not competing. You see him, he doesn't really get off the ground. He makes contact, but there's no genuine attempt to go and head the ball. You're in the six-yard box, you've got to be more dominant than that. But they deserved it because they was on top at that point. Mm. They found their way. They basically they went back to their strengths. What are we good at? Being calm, composed on the ball, and they played their way back into the game. Uh, you talked about another free kick. It's actually 57% uh, of uh, the goals in this World Cup have been scored from set pieces. I know a lot of those have been penalties, but it does seem to be that would be the highest if it stays that way. Highest percentage of goals scored from set pieces over all the World Cups we've ever played. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because it's such a huge, important part of the game, both offensively and defending. So, you know, that, that statistic doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, what about the threat from Japan throughout the game? You, you talked a lot about Osaka, but he knew he was there. I know we saw yeah. a, a pretty awful effort in the first half, but he was at the centre of much of the good work from Japan. He was, and we spoke a bit before the game about him playing on that left-hand side, but he always ends up coming in field and, look, his, his shooting boots in the first half weren't there. It, that, that went out for a throw And This was in the second half. Look at him. We said how he was always in contact. He just rolled Sanchez there, Osaka. And uh, it's poor defending, but a good save from Espina. Yeah, it was really poor from Sanchez. I mean, he, he got caught out a couple of times today. Like, like we saw earlier on the goal and, and there, he just didn't quite look at the races today. And we're talking about a play here that wasn't nailed on to even start this game. I think he's made 25 appearances and most of them have come from a substitute appearance. So he's definitely played his way and laid down a marker for the next couple of games in this uh, team. This, this is a new on the left-hand side. Again, driving inside. He loves to come in on his right foot. Again, that was Sanchez in the way. But because in the second half, Colombia went deep, Japan stretched the play on both sides, playing wide. Nagatomo going in behind there. They just controlled the second half by just by playing simple football and keeping possession of the ball. Sanchez is really highly rated, isn't he? Is there a reason, do you think, why he was a little off the pace today? Did it have something to do with the, the early red card for the fellow who plays in the side, the other Sanchez in the side? I, I would say it affected him. Mm. I think he's, he's 22. You know, th those type of mistakes of that magnitude in a game like this can affect you. And if, if you can't manage to kind of eject that thought from your head, it can end up affecting the rest of your game. And he just looked a little bit laboured to me and not, not quite at the races. We can see the opening goal because, I mean, three minutes in and the, the complexion of the game completely changed, Alex. Absolutely, we see it here. And his attributes, he's so fast and physical and he does actually have a yard on Azako here, but he just doesn't read the bounce of the ball. And at Tottenham, all season, he mops this sort of thing off, but he's just muscled off the ball, which we hardly see. I think it's his starting position. I mean, Alex mentioned it before the game. His starting position was all wrong. Kagawa gets the ball there. I think, as a centre-back, you've got to deepen. Yeah. Even though he's quick... Yeah, but uh, he still has the opportunity, though, Phil, doesn't he? I, I take what you're saying. He could be better, but even so, he's got a yard to, to play with this. So. Yeah, but you're gambling. And I think, as a defender, you don't want your centre-backs uh, centre to gamble. You want to get, get deeper, read the play, give yourself that two or three yards. He didn't do that as Okazaku did really well. And at what point should he be repositioning himself then? The minute that Kagawa gets the ball, I think he's got to retreat because Kagawa's got time on the ball. It was a clear on ball from Sanchez. I mean, he's devastated because it's a World Cup game. He goes off. It, for me, it wasn't a great penalty from Kagawa. He gets straight down the middle, not much power, but he sticks in the back of the net. And you know what? It was a brilliant start to the game. I think the, the most disappointing thing for Colombia today was that... Japan didn't have to work very hard to score their goals, did they? I mean, Colombia gave good appearance, but if you look at both the goals, they didn't have to do a lot to score, and I think it's a real disappointment for Colombia. Uh, Quintero was a, a, a bit of a star for them, particularly in that first half. We saw flashes of foul count, didn't we? And he was the man who actually, uh, well, great work to win a free kick, which Quintero actually levelled things up from in that first half. <laughs> yeah, he, he was doing this all, all game. Falcao. He was constantly looking for the contact. Of he knows the what foul. he's doing there, doesn't he? He absolutely not. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not a side of the game that I like, but I have to respect the almost the experience and the know-how 
to get your team back in the game. They were up against it. He clearly just makes contact there, doesn't he? And, and he wins the free kick with, where the goal comes from. He absolutely buys that free kick. And like you yeah. said, that's the experience. But this is so clever. It's either come from the coaching staff or the player doing their homework to know that the Japanese players in free kicks, they jump. And that's very clever play. You know, when, you know, when you, we talked about you know, coaching detail, it was brilliant coaching detail, but the actual execution still is absolutely fantastic because it's not easy to get the power on the ball, underneath the wall, the confidence to do it. I mean, it doesn't go in with that much speed. I can't believe the keeper <laughs> saying it didn't go in. You've got goal line technology there. He's going to try, though. He's going to try. Got no we used to call that a P-roller in, in the school. Yeah. <laughs> in cricket, it's a P-roller, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, Falcao, uh, we saw some of his brilliance in the first half. We got to see about half an hour of the man who won the Golden Boot in the last World Cup, James Rodriguez. And there's one, one opportunity he had which could have drawn things level at 2-2. He should have he done better. It was a brilliant defending from... Uh, our centre forward for Japan, Akazaku, had a fantastic game. This was James. He starts on the right hand side, he goes into the middle, and when, when, it, when it falls to him, you think to yourself, This is your moment. This is why you were the Golden Boot winner. Brilliant defender. He just throws himself at it, the centre forward from Japan. You think that is a certain goal from that distance. Brilliant defending. What, what a place for your centre forward to be at that stage in the game to make a tackle like that. It was a brilliant. It's play. Carlos Valderrama watching you. <laughs> I, once, uh, I was once in a hotel, in, <laughs> ridiculous thing to say, but I was in a hotel in Brazil, World Cup draw a few years ago, and I was stood behind someone in the queue for an omelette, and I thought, that looks a bit like Carlos Valderrama. And it was Carlos <laughs> Valderrama. <laughs> if, in case you're interested, he had mushrooms, story. ham and yeah. cheese. Yeah. <laughs> story. Any more funny stories? Uh, like no, that? no yeah. more funny stories. That's the end of those. I've got plenty more Valderrama tales where that came from. <laughs> Overall, do you think, because of after those three minutes, Colombia would have been happy with the point could, if they had been able to get that out of the game, having gone down to 10 men so early. Yeah, I think they would have been happy with the point. They retreated in the second half. The energy went out the team. They, they didn't get hold of the ball. Quintero went off. Hammers came on. They didn't really have an effect on the game. And I think in the second half, they were, they were hanging on. They were hanging on for that point. Do you think, though, at that point, though, they are the momentum shifted, but then the coach, the Colombian coach, was actually brave and he was throwing on attacking players. Maybe at that point, he's like, OK, we are. We're, we've not got control of this game. Maybe I do need to be happy with the draw and bring on more defensive players. It, his substitutions were actually really positive. Mm -hmm. Baca and yeah. uh, Rodriguez came on. I just wonder whether he, he, he should have just retreated, yeah. put a couple of oldie midfield players on and said, right, we've got down to ten men, and be happy get the, with point. the point. Poland and Senegal, the other two teams in that mm. team, it puts Colombia under quite a bit of pressure now, but Japan find themselves in a, in a great position. Doesn't Great position. It's, it's a classic. You win that first game. Yeah. Going into the second one, it gives you a massive lift. But I just think it's a really difficult group. When you look at the, the some difficult customers in that group, some real different playing styles, and Colombia's next, next game is going to be tough. And England's opponent at some stage could come, if they get through, of course. Uh, could, when we get through. Yeah. When, yeah. when? All right, we, you can't, you're not allowed to throw we's around. Yes, we are. You are. I yeah. work for the FA. <laughs> right, okay. And then before the start of the World Cup, there was a little doom and gloom about how well the hosts would do. Despite that, if they beat Egypt tonight, Russia will be all but sure of their place in the last 16. This is how the locals feel about how their team have started the tournament.